This week's episode of The Grid is sponsored by Impix. Shoot today, upload tonight, we ship tomorrow. Manfrotto, imagine more. On One Software, software that gets you back to shooting. Adorama, more than a camera store. Tiffin, helping create the world's greatest images. Peach Pit Press, publishers of technology books, ebooks, and videos for creative people. Epson, exceed your vision. Expo Imaging, rogue flashbenders for speedlight enthusiasts. Nick Software, photography first. And B&H Photo, the professional source. Well, hi, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Grid Live, brought to you by <coughs> folks over at KelbyTraining.com. My name is Matt Kluskowski, and today I have two guests, two guests who I have no idea how they got on this show, um, no. but somehow they ended up on the show. First, over on my left-hand side, <laughs> I'm going to try to do this right. Okay. Sales, a uh, many? Exactement. Wow. So if you're American, you can just call him Serge Romelli. Exactly. Uh, Serge is from Paris, France. Absolutely. And uh, welcome, Serge. Yeah, thank you. Can I call you Serge? Absolutely. Or do I have to say Serge the whole time? No, you can say Serge. I can say Serge. So, and In fact, uh, I've, I've called him Serge for a long time. But Serge is a, a photographer from uh, Paris. We'll talk, kind of talk, tell the story how we met you in a little while here. Um, but he was in town visiting. Uh, you're out, on your way out to El Hollywood. Hollywood. Hollywood soon. So uh, he stopped by Tampa first and, uh, and said hi to us for a little while. Over on my right-hand side. I have nobody with any bit of a cool name, like <laughs> Sales. It's cool in Wales. <laughs> Actually, you do have a cool name. It's because it's spelled kind of cool. Glenn Dewis, welcome, Glenn. Hello, Matt. How's it going, man? Very well, thank you, mate. So, you Glenn, Glenn is in town. Glenn is a photographer and retoucher out of uh, the UK, and Glenn is in town doing a class for Kelby training. So, of course, we had him on the grid. <laughs> and uh, Glenn, well, it, we have our full like European contingent here mm -hmm. today. Absolutely. Um, and this brings us over to Nancy. <laughs> so Nancy, who is always our French counterpart, is actually in Albuquerque today. Yeah. <laughs> or Walla Walla, Washington. or Because Cleveland. we just can't have two people from France nope. here today. No. So, uh, so Serge actually wins. <laughs> but that's okay. How's it going, Nancy? It's going great. Cheesy thumbs. <laughs> All right. If people want to, if people want to tweet, do whatever. What do yes, they do? If you here? want to participate in the show, um, the hashtag is the Grid Live on Twitter, and we will add your tweets to the live blog, which is running right next to the video. And um, yeah, so just come on, chime in, and uh, let's cool. hear it. All right. So, so th this is a good opportunity for for anybody that's watching because I want to tell you ahead of time. Um, if you have questions for for Serge or, or Glenn, um, just go ahead and send them now. We're going to talk. Our topic today is is there is there money in photography? But we're going to talk about a lot of different aspects of of this whole thing. So, if you guys have questions for these guys, one from Paris, one from the UK. Mm -hmm. If you got questions along any any type of a, a topic, feel free to send them in because I know that they'll be happy to answer them. Um, Serge is, is uh, so I first met Serge, well, kind of just, I, I think we have to establish at least, yeah. Uh, how, how, how we did met we you. meet? Um, I first met Serge almost, uh, was almost two years ago. Yeah. I'm um, at least came into contact with you almost two years ago. I posted about your website a long, long time ago. Yeah, that's at, right. At one point. Um, and I was going, I was going to teach in Amsterdam and France. And so I posted on my blog and I said, you know, anybody has any great shooting locations, um, you know, Please, please let me know. And so Serge re replied back, and he said, "Hey, you know, I, I live in Paris, and uh, I, you know, I'd love to take you around." And I'm thinking, "This is perfect. You know, this is, uh, you know, he's he's gonna take me around, take me to all the places." Until I realized how weird he was, <laughs> and then I quickly know, um, but no, but it, it was great because he, we literally, we met one morning for a sunrise shoot, which absolutely at which 5 a.m. Like, in front of Notre Dame. That was weird, though. You know, we've never met, and. First time we meet is meet me at five o'clock in front of Notre Dame. Yeah. You know, and it's like Notre Dame is usually full of people and it was just you and me. Yeah, you know? except at 5 a.m. <laughs> so, uh, and we had a total bust of a sunrise shoot. I mean, I don't think the sun ever barely even came up. <laughs> no. Um, but Serge is a great guy. He was just a, a whole lot of fun to get to know and, uh, and, and he Thank was you. very kind. Um, to, to take me around to a couple of places in Paris after that. So, and then most recently, so Scott was going to Paris mm. 
And I was like, dude, you're going to Paris. You got to meet Serge. He'll take you everywhere. Serge is like the, he's like the king of Paris. He knows exactly where to go shoot. In fact, you have to go. Can we pull his website up on the, on the, the web here? Photoserge.com. There it is. So, uh, so this is Serge's website and he's just got like every location to shoot. Wow. I like that one. Yeah, that's I, I wanted to get up there, and I, I for some reason I, I remember I. My kid. <laughs> oh, is it? That's yeah, cool. It's a composite. That's Notre Dame, long exposure. That's close to where we shot, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, that's a restaurant in Montmartre, very uh, old era of Paris. That's mm -hmm. the pont of my favorite bridge in Paris. Very well lit. So, in the sir, light. is the uh, where, where would they see the Eiffel Tower shot? That's like your your trademark Eiffel Tower shot. Uh, you would have to go to. Uh, uh, Paris. Go See click on the Paris link. Paris link, yeah. Yeah, it was chosen to be sold at the Eiffel Tower. I don't know. I hope I have it online. You should. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. That's that's the one. <laughs> that, that's, that one right there? Yeah, that became the sort of the official. I mean, that's the one. Uh, one of uh, um, uh, The editor like that makes postcard for the Eiffel Tower would choose this one. So when I go to the Eiffel Tower, will I actually see that photo? That's the, that's the idea. That's pretty I mean, there is some cool. other play, you know, people saying their stuff, but that yeah. should be like one of the main one there. Cool, and and we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about some of the stories on how things like that happen. So. Yes, and then Mr. Glenn Dewis mm -hmm. over here. Uh, let's pull up Glenn's website really quick if we could. And uh, Glenn is not a Paris photographer. No, I've never so, been to Paris. <laughs> really? No, I've never been. Wow. You've well, never been well, to Paris? No, 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 no. Okay, let's stop the show now. So, <laughs> so Glenn, Glenn is a uh, a photographer, retoucher, and and an incredibly gifted. Trainer as well. I've oh, seen I've seen you speak. I've seen you speak before you came here to Kelby training, um, and then and then I watched some of the, the the classes that you taught here. So Glenn is a very very gifted Thanks, trainer. Man. But you can kind of get an idea for some of the work that he does. There's uh, quite a bit of compositing that you mm -hmm. do. Um, not all of it's composite. Not all composites. Now I do um, physique work as well. Now I'm doing quite a bit of physique work for muscle kind of magazines and fitness magazines. A few yeah. band shoots as well. So. All that kind of cartoony stuff there is stuff that I do to get away from it all and have a bit of fun, to be honest with you. Yeah, so. but it's cool. I mean, that's that's kind of become your your almost signature style. Yeah, it's like a trademark style. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's uh, that's along the lines of the class that he did here. If we uh, if you look on his website here, um, let's pull it up one more time. I just want to give it. Just, you see the one with uh, the bottom second on the bottom down right the, there. The brick cops one there. That so one there. Yeah. That's kind of along the lines of. Some of the stuff that you did here for the Kelby training class. Yeah, yeah, and that's actually before Dave got into character as well on that one there. So let's get him to change after that one. <laughs> Dave Clayton. I wish he could have been here, everybody. Dave Clayton. So anyway, um, let's talk really quick. We have a prize to give away today. We're going to take a quick break and we're going to jump into our topic. Um, we're going to give away a spider camera holster. So uh, we we all have these Pete's Pete's over. You can't see Pete. Pete's in the background, like with his hands up in the air, because Pete Pete absolutely loves this thing. Um, and and I the, these these holsters are great. I'm gonna tell you why they're great, and I'm gonna steal I'm gonna steal RC Concepcion's reason of why he thinks they're great, and I absolutely 100% agree. Do you know why the holster is awesome? <laughs> No man boobs. <laughs> Seriously, think about it. Holster around your. What happens? We get these. We get these camera straps that you know they go around and it's tight. It's just man boobs. It's just it happens. So you see the, these. Didn't these, expect that to be said today. I, 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 I bet you didn't. Anyway, no. But these uh, and it's, it's like great because it takes. Monty. It, uh, it takes it takes the weight off of your camera or the weight of your camera puts it around your waist and just makes it a lot easier yeah. especially if you need your hands free if you're doing a portrait too I think wedding photographers can get a, a, a lot of use out of these um, portrait photographers if you need your hands free to do something this is a great alternative so yeah, and you look like Clint Eastwood with that I know, I know. <laughs> Quick draw. so you will win one of those today all right our topic right after this break is is there any money in photography? Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more and some stories from these two guys right after we come back. For more than 25 years, Peach Pit has been home to the world's best authors and continues to publish the best books, eBooks, videos, and apps. Whether you're an aspiring or established photographer, PeachBit is here to help you learn new techniques and inspire your creativity. PeachPit, the future looks creative. The best way to describe my philosophy is that I don't use light 
to light my models, I use light to paint my models. My name is Frank Doroff and join me on Kelby Training for my new classes on being creative and getting the shot. So in these classes I'm not going to show you only about techniques. I'm going to show you how to use the light meter, how to meter several scenes. But what I'm going to show you more is how to create interesting images and how to make the most of your locations. I'm Frank Doorhoff. Check me out on kelbytraining.com for my new classes. Hello, my name is Lindsay Adler and I'm a portrait and fashion photographer based in New York. It is filled with creative, passionate people. There are makeup artists, hairstylists, wardrobe stylists that love what they do. In fashion, there are no rules. It's all about your creativity. So when I'm doing a fashion shoot, I can focus on the lighting, on the models, on the poses, and instead I have everybody else adding their own creative contributions. It's whatever vision I have in my mind, I can make it a reality. Well, hey everybody, welcome back to The Grid, and I'm realizing here that I'm the one with the weird accent. So, so somebody wrote in, was it Monty? So Monty wrote in and said, um, yeah, we've got, we've got Serge over here and Glenn over here, so I must be the English channel, was that <laughs> it? So anyway, uh, a couple of technical comments just about some, some topics we just mentioned before. RC jumped in and said uh, the actual technical word for man boobs is moobs, he is correct. Um, mm -hmm. Eclectic chick, jumps in and says, man boobs are so last year, today, they're <laughs> called chesticles. <laughs> so, this show is already off to a great start. And Monty says, somebody make Glenn say opacity. Opacity. I'm guessing that that's not the way I that Monty to, thinks you should say I used it. to pretend I didn't know how to say it, and I used to say opacity. Okay. But it was all in jest. I wasn't it for real. Sure it was. I, <laughs> I bet. Boca. 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 And sir, how do you say opacity? Uh, opacité. Uh, no, no. Opacity. Op opacity. I just <laughs> melt when I hear that. Opacité. <laughs> and uh, and how would you say it in French? Opacité. Oh. Opacité okay. and opacity. So do I just do, do I just put a cité? iPad tablet. Opacité. Okay. <laughs> so Serge Romelli. Actually, so Romelli is actually. Italian, right? It's Italian. Yeah. If you're afraid, we just call you Serge Romelli. We're going to Romelli's for dinner. Exactly. Yeah. I, when make... I was a kid, I was. People joke about that, you know, like. And you get the rigatoni and sauce. Exactly. Like gravy, actually. It's, that's what they call <laughs> they it. They used to call me uh, ravioli, which is a type of pasta. Oh. When I was a kid, it was like, oh, ravioli, ravioli. ravioli. I get that a lot. <laughs> but not since uh, the age of 14. <laughs> so it's good. Which is only a few years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. So our topic today. Is is there money in photography? And uh, and we sat down. We 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 were actually we all went to lunch, and uh, and we started to talk about you know what what we talk about on the show today. And so so Serge started talking about, I guess you you brought it from the point of there is money in photography, but you have to work for it. And then Glenn jumped in, and said, does there have to be money in photography? You know, can't can't this just be a, a passion or a hobby for mm -hmm. people, um, you know, maybe the mistake that people make thinking there's money in photography is that maybe they shouldn't even be trying to make money in photography. Yeah, so yeah. so as, we, as this whole conversation morphed over lunch, we realized that there is money in photography, but a lot of it depends. If you're going to ask that question, we almost have to ask you a question back. Mm -hmm. And that question is, is, what type of person are you? And and what are you what are you what are you wanting from your photography? Yeah, and why do you want to make money from it? Yeah, well, yeah, and, and that's yeah, that's almost the question that you have to ask yourself. You have to ask yourself after: Is there money in photography? Mm -hmm. So, so I think the first question we, we kind of we kind of almost broke this up into mm -hmm. into three buckets almost. Where is there money in photography? The answer is no. If you fall into bucket one, mm -hmm. bucket number one was I'm I'm just I just like photography. I like shooting, and boy, would I like to be able to make money from it some way, but really I just like shooting. Then we kind of broke down into that bucket number one is there's probably not much money in, for in, in, in it for you because you're really just about shooting and having fun with it. Yeah, they're more like of a, it would be nice, but hey. 
But yeah, it's not it's not life or death. Hmm. And so it's the other the other two buckets that I think this starts to get interesting um, in. So I'm gonna I'm gonna let Serge take this over because I think I think you you kind of talked about where there could be money in photography, but along the lines of of how somebody would get there. Yeah. You know what types of what types of things people could do to make in some I don't even want to call them exercises, but things that people could do to to kind of help. Jumpstart making yeah. money. So, so yeah, my bucket is the, the person who wants to be a photographer and wants to make a living out of it. He has some craft or talent. And uh, the one thing I, I, I see a lot is people that, um, you know, I've seen that with painters and photographers. That's, you know, my observation. They, they have this thing where uh, they are counting from a, an angel from heaven, who is going to call, be an agent, who is going to do the salesmanship for them. Mm -hmm. And so they are doing their stuff and not selling much, but they don't like the sale aspect of, of the job. And so they never really start because, you know. They like to shoot. They like to shoot, but they don't like to sell. And that's one thing, you know, art, being an artist or being, a, yeah, being an artist, mm -hmm. being a salesman, being a bit two different activity. Yeah. And so I have this Durrell, this, yeah, this drill that I used to do with, with a couple of young photographers that really wanted to get there. But, you know, they said, yeah, but I don't want to, I don't want to sell. And I think that, um, I mean, unless, you know, there's exceptions to every rule, but you have for a while, at least when you start, you have to not count that somebody's going to sell for you and you have to, you have to assume it and you have to do it in a certain way. So what I used to do is, for example, in Paris, uh, one of the easy way to make money is um, shooting hotels. We have 2,000 hotels in Paris, 70 million tourists coming every, every year. And all the hotels are not chain hotels. They're owned by individual mm -hmm. people. So they renovate the hotel. It's like boutique hotels, you know, that's what we call them. And so they have renovations, new rooms or new openings all the time. So they need photos all the time. So I, I took two photographers and told them, okay, every... Tuesday morning and every Thursday morning, I want you to call 40 hotels and you don't stop and you don't go, you don't go to eat or to lunch until you've called the 40 hotels. That was the concept of the game. And, um, and even if, like, let's say they call the hotel and no one answers, that counts for one. If they speak to the hotel manager, that counts for one. Whatever. They have to contact 40 hotels. Yeah. But the whole idea was like, yeah, but I don't want to sell. I don't want to sell. And you just ask, hi, I'm a photographer. Here's my portfolio. Uh, you know, do you need photos? And uh, because the thing is, they need photos. So whether you could be the worst salesman on the planet, if the guy wants photos, he's going to say, yeah, send me your portfolio. Why mm -hmm. not? You know? And you know what? Whenever they did that, every time they had a job. And they usually had to do it for about three to four months. Yeah. And that's it. And then they were on. So the, the, the moral story, the, the conclusion of that was the, if you can assume being a salesman, especially at the beginning, uh, then... At one point, yes, you will eventually have an agent mm -hmm. or a website or whatever. It's gonna, there's a lot of good stuff coming for you. But you have to sort of like push this car, which is heavy to push at first, and then it's going to roll down the hill, you know. It's a good analogy for it, actually. And, and, I think, and I think part of one of the things to take from that is the agent and those things, they tend to come after. That's the point. You know, those things, you've got to, you've, you, like you said, you've got to kind of get the car rolling and to start with. And that stuff comes a little bit later on. And the, the, you see, the, the thing is that that first part is rough. It, and that, it'll be dishonest to say it's easy. Mm -hmm. That's the roughest part, is to start. But once you started, you started. And that's the whole thing about passion that we might yeah. talk a bit later on. Yeah, so Glenn, mm -hmm. so you, John, I, I, I'm kind of, I almost want to facilitate yeah, you the discussion like that. that happened. Yeah, I stayed away <laughs> at lunch. Um, because Glenn jumped in and said, and said something else. Well, I, I was kind of... <laughs> We immediately started talking about business when it came to photography. And I th my personal feeling is that, and this is kind of related to what we're talking about, obviously, but I think people are getting too wrapped up in it having to be a business. So, you know, no sooner do people get a camera, they seem, it seems to be, I'm not saying this is everybody, but there seems to be this mindset that, right, now I've got a camera, I've taken a few good pictures, I'm going to set myself up in business and start making some money out of it. But my whole thing I try to tell people is that, you know, that I see on workshops and I just chat to is just slow down. If you're thinking of getting into business, don't just yet. Just mm -hmm. slow down. Because no sooner do you get into business, and Alan Hess made a good comment up there um, saying about, uh, it's actually gone now, is it? No, it's the second one. Uh, yeah. Well, Alan, if you want to go into business, it's about 20% <laughs> photography and 80% business. Being in business is a whole lot different than having a photo hobby. And that's kind of the way that I feel about it is because the minute you get into business and it, it becomes your income, 
it then becomes serious. So when you're working, it, it's, you're not necessarily having to do it because you're just thoroughly enjoying it. It becomes serious. You've got to get out there and get work. Whereas mm -hmm. when you first start involved in this, which you, you got involved in because it's fun and you like doing it, there was no stress. You could take your time and just enjoy it. So I think people get into business too quick and they don't have that fun period yeah. before they then take that extra step. But even when they do take that extra step and they get into business, they then become so busy, they don't have time to do the fun stuff. And it becomes too much like a job and the fun goes out of it. So, and so I think one of the, one of the lessons to be, to be taken from, from that is that you have to decide, you have to decide just how into this photography thing you are. Yeah. Because we talked about this at lunch. Everybody says, I'm, I'm a passionate photographer. Oh, that word just drives me insane. <laughs> but but <laughs> are they really a passionate photographer? And you, you'd better be a passionate photographer because yeah. what happens is, is, is when the lows come, it's that passion that keeps you kind of going through those loads. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes or, that passion, pa the word passion seems to be something that... Yeah, Glenn, people... doesn't, Glenn doesn't like passion. <laughs> I he love passion. He doesn't like passion no, I like at passion. all. He'll tell I you. I be very passionate. When, I, I hate to be his wife. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I'd be no. married to him, number one. But. <laughs> no, don't get me wrong. I, passion seems to be a word that's kind of around the, ph the photography world that people, not everybody obviously, but it seems to be a word that people feel they have to say, you know, oh, I'm really passionate about what I do. Well, think, well if I'm paying you, I, I, I mean, I hope so. I hope you are passionate about it because you're being paid good money here. Yeah. So I think it, we should kind of change that word to passionate. What it should be changed to, I don't know, but... Serge? Yeah, what's the French for passionate? <laughs> passion. La passion. Oh, well, but see, We're not I, learning much French here today. I could learn French in a heartbeat, apparently. <laughs> yeah, it's very easy. You just have to have... The, you see, it's all the English words just with the French accent. La paper. <laughs> Le papier. La papier. Le papier. Un morceau de papier. See, look what Monty's just said there. He says, and when your hobby becomes your business, you need to find another hobby. <laughs> yeah, now, that's, that's, a good that's, that's a great comment. Because that's a good point. If you're doing the... If the photography is your hobby, and then all of a sudden, it's your life, it's your life. you've got to do it. You ain't going to have time for another hobby, really, because this is not an easy business to be in. Yeah. It's not mm. something you can just pick up every now and again. So, so you had a good definition for passion, too. Yeah, because... Uh, let me jump in I think it. I think it ties into eventually making money from... Yeah. Uh, the thing is, to give, come back to that example where you have to call 40 people and you get a lot of no. You, do, you get 39 no's and one yes, usually, you know. Uh, or 39 nothing and one yes. Yeah. Uh, point is, uh, for me, passion is an infinite. Um, how did I say it? I, sure it <laughs> I told you to write it down. And and didn't do you remember it. this? That's right. Okay, it's. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm talking to your daughter. She's off camera. Did I, did I not tell Serge to write it down? Yeah, because it was a good definition. An infinite interest. Yeah, an infinite, infinite interest. source of interest. Mm. The idea is that, uh, let me give an analogy to this. When I was a kid, I, um, I don't know, somebody talked talk to me about pianos or I saw a piano poster or I don't know, something got me into piano, doing piano lessons. And um, that poster gave me enough interest for two lessons and then I stopped. Mm -hmm. And actually it happened, I did years later, again, two, three lessons and I stopped because I just don't have the interest for piano. I just don't have that infinite source of interest. But, and, and I tried martial arts that way. I tried so many things that I dropped after four or five lessons. But when I got into photography, it was like an infinite source of interest. And that's for me is the definition of fashion because when you have to call these 40 people and get 39 no's, that's when it's good to have an infinite source of interest because you just keep on going. It'll take you through those, those yes. low points. Yes, sir. And so- It's the test. Yeah, and, and, and I think it's a good test for, for everybody that's out there that starts to think about how they'd like to make money from photography mm -hmm. is do they have that level of passion for it? Because you're going to need it in, in, in the long run. And everybody knows you're going to have to work hard at it. So where I thought it'd be a good place to take this conversation is, so let's say, and the, the discussion that we used at lunch was, let's say I am, I'm, I'm a guy that lives in St. Louis, Missouri. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I have a job in IT. And, you know, so I, I go to work every day and I code, I, I do computer code or, or something like that. And, uh, but I love photography and it'd be, it sure be great to make some extra money from, from my love for photography mm -hmm. to help pay for lenses. And, and, you know, I mean, people are even joking around up here, you know, uh, David D says there is money in photography selling cameras, lenses, <laughs> and pieces of plastic <laughs> as diffusers. You can be rich. <laughs> um, so that's, that, that was a good one. 
And then where's, there was another one here. Uh, yeah, there, <laughs> Pete <laughs> Collins says there's lots of money in photography. The trouble is getting money out of it. <laughs> so, so here's this person that that I think you know they they love photography, mm -hmm. and maybe they're a pretty decent shooter. You know, they they can they they can shoot, um, but they're probably not going to leave their full time job. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's a goal one day. Maybe it's not. And and, and at this stage, and I, and I think both of you guys had some some excellent advice. But I think at this stage, they don't have to know whether they're going to leave or not. But I think following following what both of you have done, I think there's a path for for somebody like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we were talking about driving driving the or here, sir, mm. Eiffel Tower. Your per, this is a perfect analogy to this mm. is. So this person lives in St. Louis. They drive past the, you know, the, the arch every single day or something. So you're, you're in Paris. How did that whole, how did, how did you get a shot that the Eiffel Tower now sells? Well, I went there maybe a hundred times. Uh, I just shot it over and over and over until I got the right clouds to find the right angle. Uh, it takes a lot of passion, a lot of source of interest. And, <laughs> and this wasn't your job at the time? No, Which, it was Was not. your job to walk around and shoot no, Paris? No, I was, I was uh, running a, C a CEO agency and had nothing to do with it. But I, I just had this thing going on that at 5 o'clock after work, I had to go shoot, you know, every night. Mm -hmm. And so it was good for the weather. You know, also it was usually sunshine times. So, yeah, it's, it just takes, a, you know, I had to come back and come back and come back until I had the right clouds. And then, one, and then, then I did this whole website stuff, you know that we might yeah. talk about later, because I see there's a comment about, um, yes, so how do you get in to create your first portfolio? Uh, uh, that's the thing, you know, I had this agency and I was just shooting over and over and over and taking my best shots on a WordPress website, and that's how I created my first portfolio, and uh, it took years before, I, you know, I had like serious people asking, paying me money for these photos, but, uh, mm -hmm. but it eventually happened. Yeah, and, and so, I think let, let's take that St. Louis approach again. Yes, is is what we talked about at lunch. Is you know this this person that drives to his IT job every day. You know what? Bring your camera, bring your tripod, stop and take that photo. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you, one out of those two hundred and <laughs> some odd days that that you'll stop there, whether it's sunrise or sunset, you will get a spectacular photo mm -hmm. that nobody could ever yeah. get that nobody who did not live in the city that you live in could get. Because when I visit, I'm gonna be there for a few days. You know, it's like the guy who lives in Moab, Moab Utah. Mm -hmm. He's gonna get, he's eventually gonna get spectacular photos of all the arches there because he lives there and he can go there where I've got four days. I've got four days and I can hope that the weather's good, but look, look at my trip to Monument Valley in it last week. There wasn't a cloud in the sky. Mm. And you know what, Monument Valley, it's beautiful, but it needs clouds. There needs to be clouds yeah. in the sky. So. Or your trip to this, this is boiling back, though, Matt. What you're saying there about getting this guy to photograph it every day that he's going to work on the way back and eventually he'll get a picture. That is really saying what we were talking about at lunch about not getting into it or want to make money from it straight away. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, you know, yeah. it's taking time to build up that skill and to get that eventual good picture. And I'm sure it's been the same with Serge. Yes. Yeah, I see, I see. Yeah. Serge. <laughs> <laughs> and, and myself as well. I didn't start just thinking, you know what, I'm going to photograph um, athletes and physiques because that's what I, the kind of thing that I used to get, you know, do myself. I would take loads of photos and eventually those photos got seen, but I didn't just suddenly think, I'm going to be a photographer and I'm going to photograph physiques. I did loads of it. And it's the same analogy, I guess, is what mm -hmm. you're saying there. Yeah. So you if you want to, to make money to from it, you can't expect it to be an instant thing. It's the, the one of the, the passion. Mm. Is it, it has to be a long-term vision. The you, passion's what's going to get that guy taking the picture. Yeah, it's going to get him out every day. <laughs> in St. Stuff. Louis, yeah. you know, every mm. single day on his way home or on yeah. his way to work. Yeah. That's, that's what's going to get him to do that. Yeah, exactly. And then now, now I think... Now I think, uh, I can't even call it common sense, but now I think some business sense comes in because, you know, Serge, Serge and, and, and you, Glenn, you guys had the sense to then realize where you could start turning this into a business. Yep. So that guy that now has, you know, the spectacular photo that he's taking, getting it out there and maybe calling people that would use this photo, figuring out who would use a beautiful photo of downtown St. Louis. But did that guy just suddenly say, I think I'm gonna take that picture? Or was his passion driving him to take those pictures? 
Serge, incredible landscape photographer. I'm not. Mm -hmm. I couldn't just suddenly say, do you know what? I want to make the kind of money Serge does making landscape pictures. I couldn't. I just couldn't do it. So yeah. it's kind of like you, yeah. you, you can't say, I want to be a wedding Ex photographer. The wedding, what we talk about a lot at lunch, is mm -hmm. the wedding photographer because... I tend to, the kind of topic of conversation I hear is, and I'm sure most people have heard this, is that when somebody gets into photography, they think, I want to make some money out of it. I think I'll do a few weddings first, because I know that's quite easy. I can make a bit of money to buy some kit, and then I can go and do some other things. And that, again, I'm not, I'm not an angry man, but it, <laughs> honestly, is, I'm not. He's but extremely it, angry. But it kind of really grates me, because I look at some fantastic wedding photographers out there. A friend of mine, Keith Hammond, back in the UK. This guy, he is passionate about what he does. If I was getting married, you know, years back now, and I was looking for a wedding photographer, he's the kind of guy who wants to do it. You can tell straight away he's not the kind of guy who's doing it because he wants to make a quick book and then go yeah. off and do something. Mm. Serge is very passionate about the kind of photography he does, which is why he gets the results he does. Yeah. Mm. So, so, so one of the questions Joe said, um, so he's saying, so should we quit yeah. our jobs and start? What's the process mm -hmm. you went through? So, I, so let's, can we get, you know, sure. both of what, you know, what, what did you guys do to get to this point? So yeah, I mean, just a little background. Uh, I never took a photo in my life in 2005. I never had touched a camera. I, I, I was on holidays in the Seychelles, a very nice <laughs> island. And I was with a, a Photoshop retoucher and he, uh, he showed me what Photoshop could do. And I was, my jaw dropped and I was like, wow. Because I've always wanted to be in the business of making movies or making photos. And I don't know, I had this idea, a camera, Photoshop, ooh, you can create some nice stuff. So I just, Bought some books from uh, Scott, <laughs> Scott Kelby. No joke. I went into the library and and but I was the head of this SEO company and uh, so I was staying. I studied a lot, a lot. All the books I could get my hands on. Became an APP member uh, and started shooting, 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 shooting. And uh, I started this website. So I started putting seeds. That's how you called it. You know, like building something like a, a portfolio. And um, and one day I found a way to quit my job and go all the time. I was, uh, because I had this huge collection of photos. I, I Which came a, from years. Yeah, it, it went from 2005 to 2010, I had 100,000 photos of Paris. Out of this 100,000 photos of Paris, I had 200 good shots. No kidding, that's my light from library, is 100,000 photos. 200, sh and I started getting calls, you know, like, hey, you know, we want this, we want that. And um, how did you get the? But how did people see those photos? Was it from your blog? Yeah, from the blog. I um, I have this trick which I find because uh, I used to work in SEO. You were in SEO. Yeah. So. so yeah, WordPress and Google are very friends. Uh, you know, WordPress technology is very friendly with Google uh, uh, indexing. Sorry. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the the point is when you make a photo, there's a little SEO trick. Um, the title of the photo you're going to put, put something that people are actually going to look for on Google. For example, uh, if I shoot the opera in Paris, I don't, show, I don't put the title as oh, a great photo of the opera or a night photo of the opera because no, not much people is going to type a night photo of the opera on Google. But the, I put uh, opera Paris photo because a lot of people is going to type opera Paris photo. Ah. You know? And so this way, so that photo has a title, which we call it H1. Tag. Each one tag. It's yeah. a, that's in the HTML if you were yes, to look exactly. at the code behind it. Exactly. And so you have the photo, a little description. But the most important thing is that tag. And so each page, 200 photos is 200 page. That's some kind of content for Google. And so when somebody types, you know, Opera, uh, photo, Opera, it takes a while, you know, to get there. It took me like 18 months, you know. But eventually now when you look for anything in Paris, you come to my website. Yeah. And that took me uh, some time, but that was the whole idea. So, so... Uh, and I think a good lesson to be learned from that is, you know, you'll often see people that, that name their photos. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a picture of a small waterfall in, in the morning, and they'll name it, you know, and she weeps softly. <laughs> yeah. And, and so you're saying that, and she weeps softly, is probably, it's not going to get you a whole lot of hits. No, because who's typing that? Waterfall, waterfall yeah. photos. Yeah, or you say, I don't know, I think I saw a post from you, said, my trip to blah, blah, blah. You know, so I screwed up. <laughs> yeah. <'cause laughs> Darn my, it. You know, who's going to type my trip to blah, blah, blah? You know, ah. that's interesting. Huh? So I need to rename it. So just my photography from Utah, my, from yeah. Monument Valley. Monument, Monument Valley Monument. photo, you know, or a horseshoe photo, you know. Horseshoe band, yeah. Page Arizona photo. But you have so, to put photo, like, because that's what people type, you know. Page I'm Arizona photo or And so that's photo. the title of your blog post from that. Yeah, exactly. And that's, huh. and that gets 
more a better index. Is there any way I can have a cool mm. title, but yet still like have no? My photo? That's that's a problem. You have shady titles, yeah. but you <laughs> but you get good contacts. Oh. Talk, talking about how you're getting noticed and getting contacts, because obviously without that, you're never going to have a business anyway, without people knowing who you are. The, the biggest turning point for me in my business was when I decided to start blogging. That, that was the biggest thing out of everything that I did, because back in November 2009, I was getting, and I thought it was quite good at the time, I was getting 200 hits a month, and I was quite impressed with that. <laughs> um, but then I got, and then I think at the time, I didn't really know what I wanted to be. Yeah. But I was given advice, look, you've got so many portfolios here. I had food, weddings, commercial portraits, and trying, like, you know, tried a couple of landscapes, and I had all these portfolios there, thinking the more I put out, the more I'll get noticed, the more work I'll get. And it had the total opposite effect. And a friend uh, told me to get rid of all of them, have the portfolio that you want, and then see what happens. And sure enough, by getting rid of that, all of those, port all of those portfolios and having one, I ended up landing a contract with Air New Zealand that the previous year I didn't get because they said they didn't know what I was. Mm. But the blogging, oh. the blogging side of it, I was getting these hits of 200 a month thinking it was great. And then I read a book called Inbound Marketing. I get nothing for advertising that, but I read it. And it kind of gave an idea of how to blog. Because before I was writing blogs and it was like, me, 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 me. Do you know what I mean? Whereas mm -hmm. now this book said, like, give people a reason to come back. So I would say, look, here's what I've done. Here's how I've done it. And three months later, in February, I had 15,000 hits that month. And I'm getting sometimes up to now about 100,000 hits a month. Mm -hmm. And that's not to say, oh, look at me, aren't I clever? No, it's just a case of how I'm using a blog. Because mm. I see some blogs, it's just like, hey, oh, look what I've done. Here's my picture. It's like, well, yeah, great. I'm only going to visit that a few times mm -hmm. until you start giving me a little bit more that I'd be interested in. Yeah. And when you blog, when Scott blogs, and everybody else that we kind of follow, they all will say, here's what I've done. Here's how I've done it. So yeah. it's kind of like a learning process. Yeah, and yeah. it gives you want to you want to go back to people, it. People, yeah, and people like the the story, the story behind something. Yeah, absolutely. Too, so. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, so, so Glenn, so just to to answer the question mm -hmm. that we got before, um, so you had a, you had a different job. You you didn't mm -hmm. just graduate from college and say I'm going to be a photographer. No, never, never, ever wanted to be a photographer. It was never something that I was thinking one day I'll be a photographer. I've always been a geek. I've always liked computers, so I always knew I'd get involved in computers in some way, but I was involved in like the sort of um, security industry and all that kind of stuff and the home office kind of stuff back in the UK. Um, and the only way I was introduced to Photoshop, first of all, I got into this all through Photoshop, is my uncle was always the family photographer. He was around my mom's house the one day. I saw him using this bit of kit and he said, oh, look at this, I can get red eye out of a picture. <laughs> and he went click Ooh. and I was like, oh my God, I'm totally hooked. <laughs> so being the kind of person I am, I can't just do something, I have to get really involved in it. I, um, that I got a copy, it wasn't a legit copy, I have to admit, at the time, of Photoshop. And on the very first day I opened it, clicked it and went, right, well, now what? I was expecting to get this like, oh, here we go, mm -hmm. do some stuff. Didn't know what to do. Went online, Googled Photoshop tutorials, found the NAPP, joined them. Two months later, I found myself in America, Las Vegas, for the very first time it had been in America, <laughs> Photoshop World, and that was it. But I remember that. I ca yeah, I came back, I studied for the Adobe Ace exam, which had no benefit to me in the UK. It was a personal thing because I wanted to kind of develop myself. And then I started putting myself out there doing work, retouching other people's work. Um, but then stuff was coming in that was like, if I said the phrase turning, trying to turn a um, sow's ear into a silk purse, did you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I was getting all this kind of stuff there's coming a, in. There's a much more harsh phrase yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, <laughs> <laughs> I was told by Dave, no. Um, so, <laughs> so then I kind of got, got a camera and then I started doing my own pictures. So way down the line, I wasn't interested in getting involved in business, but eventually it kind of got into place where I did then get involved into business. But I certainly did not leave my full-time job. Mm -hmm. I kind of got a job within that job that allowed me to have the freedom to do more of it yeah. and then kind of petered that down where it wasn't necessarily that important and the photography and the Photoshop and researching has taken over. Cool. So, Two good stories too. All right, so uh, let's take a look at some of the questions here. Alan Hess says, uh, this is the key, find the market and people willing to pay for your, pay, find the market, the people willing to pay for your images not go and shoot and then try to figure out who to sell mm. to. That's pretty, that's mm. actually a really good idea. Yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah. it's, find the market, find who's willing to pay, then go out and shoot. Don't just shoot and say, yeah, hopefully somebody will buy this one day. Mm. And yeah, if I can just, there was the one comment about, you know, how do you make like a first time portfolio? If you don't want to get into the whole WordPress thing, one good thing I advise, just to show your work, which is really effective and it takes, 
it's 500px. Mm -hmm. I have a, I created you know an awesome account on 500px. It's 50 bucks per year. Yep. And uh, if if you can put it on the screen, it's sergeremily.com. That's the 500px uh, awesome thing. And it's really awesome. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I really that's what I, they call I, it. I, I love 500px. <laughs> I really love this company and. Um, I don't get anything. I paid my fifty dollars, and yeah, it's, you can have a you know a very nice portfolio in no time if you've got stuff to work to show. Uh, they have you know templates. It takes like two hours. <coughs> And, um, was, was that person saying, how do you put a portfolio up? Or were they saying, yeah. how do I get a port? How do I make yeah, a portfolio? Was, Whoever it was, if they could like send the message in again saying to clarify, were yeah. they saying how to, are they saying how to build a portfolio or actually get so, one online? Okay, and if they're asking how to get a portfolio online, I think I think what Serge said yeah. is, is really Spot good. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think what Alan said about building a portfolio, or if, mm. if the question is about building a portfolio like, Putting images in, how do I figure out what, what my portfolio is going to be? I think Alan had a, you know, that's a really good, mm. that's a really good, uh, a yeah. really good yeah. quote there is, yeah. is, you know, figure out what people are willing to pay for. Mm -hmm. And I think you know, it really goes to, into any business, right? Mm -hmm. Figure out what people want mm. and then, and then satisfy that need rather than, rather than, yeah, and we, so many people, you get caught up in, I know how to do something. I know how to teach something. I know how to sell something. So you do it thinking that everybody must want it and it's mm -hmm. kind of the opposite way you know? <laughs> yeah but then so. saying that although you know the point alan makes is good there to sort of find out what people want and do that i still couldn't if people were saying all they want to buy because we said earlier on what are the most common pictures out there it's land or kind of category pictures it's landscapes mm -hmm. we said generally if that's what people wanted i still couldn't go out there and do that because be that's screwed. just not me i would be i'd be broke i'd be living <laughs> in a cardboard box somewhere <laughs> so yeah. and real quick uh, if we could pull up a, a, a website um, it'd be matt-kluskowski.squarespace.com i wanted to show them cuz cuz pete pete and i are just are in the process of moving our portfolios over into squarespace and i think i want to say rc was doing it too but it's matt-kluskowski Dot squares. Is that it? Can you type it in, Pete, just to make sure that they're not searching or drawn? Um, so if we can pull it up on screen here, I just want to show people th this is this is my new favorite online portfolio. Mm. Um, I, I think that the portfolio, and this is just like out of the box. And uh, you can just click on click on the photo and it'll just keep cycling through and you can oh, see there's a lot. Nice. But this is like literally, <laughs> like this is out of, like I had, uh, Pete, how long did it? <laughs> how, how long did it take to get this going? This was like 15 minutes. Yeah, 15 minutes tops to get a portfolio That's going. Pretty yeah, it's very good. And, and I mean, it, if you want to do, you can do pages with forms. I was amazed at how easy it is. So. But you've still got your 500px portfolio. I still have 500px, and I'll still keep all that. And, you know, RC, RC swears by Flickr. RC has a lot of luck on Flickr, so well, I'll still well, probably post come in from 500px recently. Yeah. So my <coughs> advice to anybody would be, if there's if the facility is out there to use a site, use, like them, use them. Yeah. I mean, what would you say, Serge, $50 for the yeah. 500px? Yeah. Use it. You know, because I, I had a job come up two, three <coughs> weeks ago. The, uh, there's an anti-steroid campaign to photograph that in Manchester. And the guy who was running it, a friend of his, sent him an email saying, look, oh, I've just posted a picture on 500px, have a look. So he goes and has a look at it. While he's there, he starts browsing and sees a picture of a bodybuilder that I'd taken. Just so happens he's doing a campaign, then sort of contacted me through that. See? Mm -hmm. So it's just weird. Yeah. If you put your stuff out there, you never know, you never <coughs> know when it's going to get found and you're going to get contact. And, and if I can, if I can take, if I can draw on that and, and to, to, to talk go back over to some of the people that we were we were talking to um people that have a full-time job mm. they're probably you know not going to leave that full-time job and just say i want to be a photographer mm -hmm. and and just drop it no both the commonality between both of these stories is they they took a lot of photos and they posted a lot of photos so it's up to you in whatever area that you live in to figure out what that's going to be? Is it going to be portrait for you? Is it going to be uh, you know we mm. go to St. Louis? You know I'm, I'm, I you know because I, I was in St. Louis and I was I was near somebody who lived there and they're just like ah there's nothing to shoot here. But yeah. you know what? The the rest of the country thinks like the arch with the city sky and looks pretty cool. Mm. It's just you live there. You know it's like here it's like the last thing I want to go shoot is a sunset. Yeah. Here in Tampa, Florida. Yeah. But 
people love sunsets. Uh, I mean, yes. you just, you I'm know, a, people love... crazy here, I would yeah. If you've there, got the passion, you'll find some near, Yeah, there's people that don't live near water <laughs> that don't get to see that a lot. So it's up to you to, to figure out that, what that is. But if you're thinking you might want to make a little bit of extra money in, in this photography thing, I think part of it is, is, is getting out there and finding something to shoot and posting about it a lot. Mm, because it doesn't just, yeah. if you just post one photo a year, one photo a month even, you're, you're not you're not getting to that point. You've got to constantly have something out there, and the more you have, the more the more mm. likely you, you have. You're also not going to look like an authority because going back to the Air New Zealand analogy, if I only had like three or four portrait <coughs> pictures and loads of food stuff, and I was trying to get a job doing them their portraits, they go, well, you don't seem to have done enough. Yeah. Mm. So build up a, por a portfolio with plenty of stuff in there, so they can see that you're adaptable and you can photo all kinds of different people. Mm. All right, so we, we, have, we have one question here, and we're, we'll take it after the break, but I think it's a good So what do Glenn and Serge do for a hobby? So I'll <laughs> let you guys kind of marinate on that one. We're going to take a very quick break, and we'll come back. We have uh, some questions that we'll go through. we got a, a whole list of questions here. And uh, we'll do our giveaway and all that fun stuff. See you back here in a minute. At Adorama, our trained staff share your love of photography and can help you find what you're looking for. Our inventory is stocked with all types of cameras and accessories you need. Adorama has it all. Adorama, more than just a camera store. Visit us at 42 West 18th or at Adorama.com. I really believe that your photography is a reflection of who you are. In my posing class, you're going to learn a lot of things. How to pose a bride and bring out the best in her shape and her curves. You how to photograph a groom, because many of us who may focus on the bride will ignore the groom. And getting your clients to mirror you. Mirroring, I find, is the best way of getting people to pose. I'm Jerry Guionis. Check out my class on the fine art of posing at kelbytraining.com. We are back live on the grid with Glenn Dewis and Serge Ramelli. I'm not <laughs> once in the show. With Serge the Ramelli. <laughs> All right, so uh, a couple of things here, and and so I, I kind of realized before um, <laughs> when I said RC's having a lot of luck on, on Flickr, it, it's not luck. I mean, there, there's there's skill <laughs> involved, and I just a, a different word. I, RC's having a lot of success and a lot of response on Flickr. So you often hear people say that you know. With, with 500 px and google plus and, and all those different services that flickr flickr is not what it used to be yeah, but yeah. there's still many many people that yep. are are yeah. having a lot of response on flickr mm, it's so, there, so still use it you can uh, mm. you, you can't take that out of the game yet so absolutely anyway so uh, what do what do you do for a hobby then movies <laughs> oh yeah that's right uh, yeah movies i mean it's more than a hobby to, really but that's my next step usually yeah I want to direct movies. I'm producing movies. I'm starting. I'm producing a lot of short movies. Mm -hmm. It's. I don't make money out of it, so you could call it as a, a mm -hmm. hobby for now. But it's hopefully. But you hope to. Hope to uh, make the switch because originally wanted to direct movies and and uh, sh being a photographer was my idea was that you know making movies you need like 20 people to just to make the movie with being a photographer you just take your camera it's one of the shot of uh, you know out of the 25 per second, so. Um, hmm. I like that. So now I want to add some that, as a 24 shots. Do you uh, do you enjoy the directing part more? Do do you actually do you actually do any of the camera work yourself, or are you really you you enjoy the direction? Uh, I, I I did one first shot movie and I did everything on that. But like I'm shooting a short uh, in January, and this one I have like a real director of photography because I'm good with uh, studio light, but not with video light. Yeah. Um, I enjoy. Uh, yeah, I enjoy the the camera movement. I enjoy the storytelling. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I'm That's a cool. huge movie fan. So movies is really my hobby. Cool. I, I live for movies. <laughs> and uh, Glenn. Uh, well, I used to um, train bodybuilding competitions and stuff like that, but I've really toned down on that now. Yeah, really <laughs> toned down. They start, come, come on, let's see. Let's, come oh, on. God. Can you yeah. kill um, <laughs> I'm left handed. Here, I get to. <laughs> Damn, I would. I could do two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <Double> moves. <laughs> <laughs> moves. I can move them. Um, can you really? Yeah, yeah. Let's see. 
Ooh. <laughs> wow. Hey, shake those things. Cheese My eyes will never be the same again. <laughs> I can't believe I did that on the grid. Um, hey, if we go get a so, camera strap for you. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, bringing it back. Uh, I don't Seriously, do we give you an opportunity to come on the grid? And that's what you do. <laughs> Dancing moves. Um, so I don't train as much as I used to. I've really had to tone it down now because I find that I'm busy most days. So really, I, if I didn't kind of take the time to spend it with my wife, then I would never see her. So really, in my spare time now, we go away as often as we can. We love going down to Devon, down in the coast, which is where we're looking to move. Make sure you tell her I said hi to you. I will definitely do that. We'll definitely do that. So that, that's Paris. really what I do. I, I've got to do that. <laughs> um, He's so got yeah, a place spend... for you to stay. You can crash on his couch. Uh, Absolutely. That is recorded, so you can hear that, <laughs> right? Okay. Um, so yeah, it's just spending as much time as I can with my wife, otherwise I just never would see her. Yeah, cool. All right, so uh, let's see, a couple of questions here. Barb's playing HDR. Hi, Barb. Uh, I was thinking Hello. most guys would Google sexy, so every picture should be hot and sexy <laughs> Irish landscape, for example. <laughs> LOL. Alan That's good, Barb. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, Alan Hess says, Dancing Moobs, <laughs> name of a new band. That is a good name. So, <laughs> somebody grab moves. that URL quick. <laughs> uh, Nick, of the U Nick of the Uck says... <laughs> <laughs> Nick, Nick of the UK says, for every photographer making a living out there, remember 100 plus people who call themselves pro photographers, uh, but never do more than shoot their family weddings. Mm. Sad. So interesting. So, uh, Kevin Halliburton, you have to fail. You have to fall in love with business. Uh, and I think we're talking about making money in yeah, yeah. photography. Uh, you can't wait for that love to fall out of the sky, you have to start acting like you're in love with business, stick with it, and sooner or later, the, the feelings will follow. And, and, I, and I agree with Kevin. And so I, I think, I, I guess I hoped one of the things that we, we covered in this show, and I, I don't know if we did it or not, but one of the things was just to, you know, I think if, if you don't wanna make money from photography, if you're kinda on the edge, Hopefully we convinced you that if you're just kind of on the edge, you probably don't really want to do it and you don't have the passion. Sorry, <laughs> you, you don't have the passion that, that is going to carry you through that point to, to make money from this. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're in that next phase where, and I, so I think that's, that's kind of obvious. And I think if you really want to make money and like you want to make this your business, mm -hmm. I think the answers become somewhat more clear because it's like you know 100% you got to do what Serge did. Totally, yeah. You got to make those calls um, and, and you, ha you have to work at this 100%. You have to fall in love with business. You have to do all those things that, that people have said here. And I, I think what we were kind of hoping to, to kind of bridge the gap was that middle, that middle group of people that would love to make a little bit of extra income and maybe see if this will lead to a full-time job. Mm. But don't can't afford the luxury of saying I'm going to quit my job today yeah, because they the maybe they themselves. have a kid that they're ready to put into college in two yeah. years or you know and just and have a good job and they can't afford to quit what I wanted to do was kind of give them some some ideas on how to do this because mm. both of you did that mm. both of you did exactly that neither one of you quit your jobs right away and no. said I'm going to be a photographer full time you both kind of worked your way into it mm -hmm. so that's what I was hoping to, to get from this whole show. So and I think you guys did a great job because you both have uh, really good stories on it. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Matt. All righty. So, <laughs> Miss Nancy from Albuquerque, New Mexico. <laughs> walla Walla, Washington. <laughs> Quick, how okay. do you spell Albuquerque? So, since we only have one prize today, which is the spider, man boob strap. Yeah, the man boob strap. Or, the um, the moves no more. Moves by, no uh, more. By Spider, <laughs> i.e. Ergo, therefore camera host holster. Um, what you're going to do is click the link that I just published in the live blog and go to kelbytv.com slash contest, fill out the form. Obviously, you don't have to put down the prize you want, but make sure that you put your shipping information and your phone number in the comment box, and uh, we'll draw a winner on Monday. Great. And you know what? If you want to help us out, because part of, part of this whole show is, is we're sponsored by people, Spider Holster. I'm sure they have a Twitter account. I'm sure they do. <laughs> I'm sure Nancy can find it for us in just sure about 10 seconds while I tell you what you can go tweet. No more man boobs <laughs> at spider holster, whatever they're called. But it helps out any, any, if you're spreading the word on, on, our, on our, uh, the people who help out the show. That always helps out, too. So just go out there and tweet. I watched the grid today. No more man boobs As at a spider of fact, holster. They are. I just spider holster. Brad just, Brad's putting it up. Yep. Spider holster. Yeah, thank you, Brad. <laughs> I guess his connection is faster than mine. That's it. Well, plus we can see what he, he says right there. Uh -huh. so. Anyway, Glenn, 
Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. You're welcome. My friend, no arm wrestle just yet. <laughs> Thank you very much for, uh, for, for being on the show today. Serge, pleasure as always. No and uh, two, two great guys. Where can we find out more about, about you, Serge? I know we had your website up earlier, but... Photoserge.com. Photosage.com. Photosage.com. I have a podcast every Monday. Do you, is there, is there, it's all on the website, too? It's we on can the website. See Everything is there. I have training. I've got all, all in English. And cool. Yeah. Great. And uh, Glenn, photoglynn.com? Uh, uh, <laughs> website yeah. is uh, glynnjuice.com, Facebook, Google+, Plus, Twitter. And you blog, too. And I blog every day, and it's all in one website. It used to be Glenn Jewish blog and glynnjuice.com, but it's all in just one website, glynnjuice.com. Sweet. All right, guys, thank you again so much for, uh, for, for being on the show today. Folks, thank you so much for watching the show today. We do appreciate it. Um, next week is the, it's the day before Thanksgiving next week, so our, our next Wednesday. Um, I can tell you pretty much that I think everybody in, in anywhere has pretty much checked out by that point. So we are not going to do a show uh, the day before Thanksgiving, but we'll be back. Or we'll be right back the Wednesday after that, which I think is the 28th. And supposedly, it's, this is the plan. She hasn't, she you know, made this plan months ago, but Catherine Hall um, oh, is uh, Catherine Hall, who's a you know, very well known photographer out. Uh, out in California is supposed to be in Tampa that day and she's going to be on the grid so uh, we should have her on and, and that's again she hasn't said she's not going to be here and we made these plans months ago so Catherine Hall will be on two weeks from today have a great rest of your week have a great Thanksgiving week have a great everything and uh, we will talk to you guys again very soon <laughs> this week's episode of the grid is sponsored by Impix, shoot today, upload tonight, we ship tomorrow. Manfrotto, imagine more. On One Software, software that gets you back to shooting. Adorama, more than a camera store. Tiffin, helping create the world's greatest images. Peach Pit Press, publishers of technology books, ebooks, and videos for creative people. Epson, exceed your vision. Expo Imaging, rogue flashbenders for speedlight enthusiasts. Nick Software, Photography First, and B&H Photo, the professional source.